Hi, I'm Meryl Thea Dominique Ribadlawan of BSC 1B. In this video, we are going to solve problems from algebra and trigonometry. So, each problem comes with different levels of difficulty. So, for the first one, we have the easy level. Second, we have the intermediate level. And for the last one, we have the difficult level. So, all in all, we have three problems to solve. Two problems from algebra and one from trigonometry. So all along while solving these problems, I'm going to discuss the methods and the concepts that come with it, so that you may be able to understand and to solve these problems more easily. And also for you guys to be more comfortable when dealing with math problems like this. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so for the easy level, we have problem number one. A perfumer wishes to blend perfume valued at $4.10 an ounce with a perfume worth $2.50 an ounce to obtain a mixture of 40 ounces worth $3 an ounce. So the question is, how much of the $4.10 perfume should he use? So in order to visualize the situation, we are to make a table. So we have here given $4.10 an ounce. So since it was not mentioned as to how much of these $4.10 perfume are we going to use, so we are to represent that with a variable x. be confused so it so x ounces of 4.10 dollars is to be blended with a perfume meaning we are to add them together again it was not mentioned as to how much of the 2.50 dollar perfume we are going to use so we are going to represent that with a variable y so we have y ounces of 2.50 dollar perfume so that is equal to 40 ounces worth three dollars an ounce so from the given situation from this table right here you can derive an equation from this table right here. So for the first equation, we have x ounces plus y ounces equal to a total of 40 ounces. So that is our first equation. So for the second equation, we are to compute this all in all. So we have 4.10 dollars for every ounce so that explains why we multiply this two right here so we multiply them because for every for every ounce for every x ounces it is worth 4.10 dollars so we multiply them right here same goes with this 2.50 times y for a total of 40 ounces which is worth $3 each so we have 4.10x plus 2.50y equals 120 so this is our second equation right here. So let me just remove this so that you will not be um, confused. Okay, so we have equation 1 and equation 2. So what is asked in the problem? So we are asked if how much of the 4.10 dollar perfume will be used so since x represents 
how much of the $4.10 perfume will be used, we are going to solve for x. Okay, so how are we going to solve for x? Okay, so... Wait. move down okay so we have to solve for x so how are we going to solve for x we need to cancel the y so in order to do that we should first um, put it right so in order to cancel y we should multiply Again, so in order to cancel y, we should multiply um, equation 1 right here with 2.50. Okay, so remember that. So if we multiply the first equation, with 250, the result will be like this. Let me just remove this. So we will have, okay, so we will have 2.50x plus 2.50y and 2.50 times 40 that is actually 100 so if we are to cancel y there what operation should we use of course we will subtract these equations so 2.50 minus positive okay so that positive 2.50 minus positive 2.50 that will be zero thus it will be cancelled so the only thing that is left is 4.10x minus 2.50 that is 1.6x equals 120 minus 100 is just 20 so in order to find x we are to divide 1.6 on both sides So, dividing 20 by 1.6, we obtain x equals 12.5 ounce. Therefore, we obtain x is equal to 12.5 ounces. So that means that 12.5 ounces of perfume worth 4.10 ounces will be used in order to make a 14 ounces perfume worth $3 an ounce. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so for our intermediate level, we have problem number two. The length of a rectangle exceeds its width by 2 meters. If each dimension were increased by 3 meters, the area would be increased by 51 square meters. Find the original dimensions of the rectangle. So we have for the first condition, We have the first area, A sub 1. We have L, or the length, is equal to 
the width plus 2. Because it says here that the length of the rectangle exceeds its width by 2 meters. So, the measurement of the width plus 2 is the measurement of the length. So, that explains why L is equal to W plus 2. So, our width is equal to W. Okay. For our second condition, we have a sub 2 for the second area because there is a situation here that says if each dimension were increased by 3 meters, the area would be increased by 51 square meters. So, the first area will be increased by 51 square meters. So, that is, we have a sub 2 or the second area is equal to the first area plus 51. So, from there, okay, so from there, we can make this equation under the second condition. Our length, which is W plus 2, will be added by 3 as stated on the situation back in the problem and then we have our width which is w percent percent we have our width with it which is represented by w we will add three so we have l equal to w plus five and width equal to w plus 3 so having those values we are to equate it together so as you can see we have a sub 1 here and for a, and for a sub 1 we have these um, dimensions w plus 2 for the length and w for the width so in order to find, in order to compute it, we need to find the area first. And we know that the area is actually, so A sub 1 is actually length sub 1 times width sub 1. In which our length sub 1 is W plus 2 and our width is w. so computing that we have a sub 1 we will just distribute this so we have w times w we have w squared and w times 2 we have 2w so now we have obtained a sub 1 Okay, so for the next one, we are to solve for a sub 2. For a sub 2, we have the following dimensions as you can remember. For the length sub 2 and width sub 2. So for the length sub 2, we just added 3 to the original dimensions of the length on the first condition. So we have so we have obtained w plus 5 times w plus 3 because we are to find the area. So that means we need to multiply the length and the width together. So distributing these, distributing these, you obtain Okay, so let's take it slowly. W times W, W squared, W times 3, we have 
a w and the 5 times w we have 5 w and then 5 times 3 we have 15 so we have to combine like terms so we have a sub 2 is equal to w squared plus 8w plus 15 so now we have our a sub 2 okay so the next thing we need to do is to solve for this equation okay so we have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus 51 so we already have a sub 2 and we already have a sub 1. Now all we need to do is to substitute it to the equation. So we have uh, w squared plus 8w plus 15 is equal to our a sub 1 which is w squared plus 2w plus 51 so I just copied plus 51 over here so what we need to do is we should isolate all the w's on the left and all the constants on the right so what I'm going to do is that we have w squared here this w squared right here will be transferred here so w squared then we just copy 8w and we also transferred this here so as you can see we have transposed w squared to the left and 2w to the left also so that is why we have changed the signs to negative because that's what we usually do when we transpose um, terms from right to the left or vice versa. So the only thing that is left on the right is 51 and also we will move 15 to the right. So again we will change the sign of 15 to become negative 15. So W squared minus W squared, this will cancel. The only thing that will be left is 8W minus 2W. So that will be 6W equals 51 minus 15 is 36. To obtain, to obtain the value of W, we will divide both sides, divide both sides by 6. So this will be cancelled. Therefore, W is equal to 6. Okay, so since we have found the value of W, it will be easy, it will already be easy to find the dimensions, original dimensions of it. So you can remember, we have L equals W plus 2. This is for the original dimensions. Dimensions. For the original dimensions. And W is equal to W. So, we already have the value of W, which is 6. So, the width is 6 meters. Just enclose it in a box. And for our length, W plus 2. So, 6 plus 2. So, our length is actually 8 meters. So now we have our original dimensions, 6 meters for the width and 8 meters for the width. Okay, so that's all for problem number 2. We now move on to 
problem number three, which is our last problem set. And so for our last problem set, we have arrived at a difficult level. So we have problem number three. Given the arc length 17 pi over 6, having an initial point at 1, 0. First, we are to rotate and state the quadrant in which the terminal point lies. Second, we have to convert the angle to degrees. Third, is to find the smallest positive coterminal angle. So, actually, what I am going to do with this is to first convert these 17 pi over 6 to degrees so that it will not be hard for us to locate the terminal point. It's just how I do it usually. So actually, we have the arc length 17 pi over 6 having an initial point at 1, 0. So, you still, so this is actually a unit circle. So when we deal with unit circles, the arc length is actually equal to the central angle because we have this um, formula for the arc length S equal to the angle times the radius. So deriving the formula, we have in order to isolate the angle because we are interested in finding the angle we are to divide both sides by r now giving us angle central angle is equal to arc length divided by r but r right here is actually one because we are dealing with a circle so when we do 17 pi over uh, 6 divided by 1 we still get this as an answer. So basically, our central angle is equal to 17 pi over 6. So basically, that is our angle. I just shown you guys how to identify the angle so that you will not have a hard time in plotting it. I mean, in plotting the terminal point. So now, what we're going to do, since we already know that the arc length is actually equal to the central angle when we are talking about um, unit circles, what we're going to do is to actually convert um, radians to degrees. Again, this is just what I do. This is just what I usually do so that I will not have a hard time in plotting um, the angle in the Cartesian thing because, yeah, it is actually easier to plot the angle when you have the degree measurement. So, 17 pi over 6 is actually in radians. Now, what we're going to do is to find the degrees so that it will be easy for us again. So, in order to do that, we are to multiply this by 180 over pi. So, this is for the reason of having this cancelled. So, yeah, so we cancel pi, we can already have final answer so this is 1 this is actually 30 17 times 30 is 510 so this is already in degrees so guys this is how you convert radians to degrees so now we have our degree measurement 510 Now we have already answered this one, so let me just cross that out. Now, oh, actually we have solved number two first before number one. 
but it doesn't matter. What matters is what is more convenient for you, what is more easier for you to do in order to solve the problem. So yeah, mathematics is very complex. As they have said, there are many ways to kill a cow, but really this is math. You don't have to kill a cow. You just have to look at different perspectives in order to solve a problem. So yeah, we are going to solve for the first one. This is actually actually number two. And now we are going to solve for the first one. Be located in a partition plane. Okay, so we have 510 degrees again. So where is 510 degrees? What you can do is if you have another paper, you can try using a protractor. So actually, 510 have already exceeded a whole revolution. So again, that would be, um, I guess, a bit complicated to plot. So, in order to make it easier for you guys to um, to plot 510 degrees, we will need to find the smallest positive coterminal angle. And again, that is the third part of this problem. So, what I am going to do is again to find the smallest positive coterminal angle so that it will not be hard for us to plot it in the Cartesian plane. So to find the smallest positive coterminal angle, we are to subtract um, multiples of 360 from our angle right here, which is 510 degrees. So we are to do that by subtracting a multiple of 360. So since 510 is greater than 360, we can subtract 360 from 510 and we will be able to obtain a positive result. Whereas if we subtract 720, then our result will be negative. So that is how it works. So 510 minus 360 degrees we have 150 degrees so that is actually our smallest positive coterminal angle this is for item 3 we just cross it out already found this and now for the first one we are to we are now to locate and state the quadrant in which the terminal point lies the concept of the terminal point is actually like this so as you can remember we are dealing with a unit circle like this and we have this Cartesian plane so the terminal point is actually like this so when we have an angle let's say for instance this is our angle right here our angle actually has an initial side which is the one i have drawn here and a terminal side which is this one and the one that we call a terminal point is actually the point The one that we call terminal point is actually that point wherein the terminal side, um, terminal side of our angle meets with the arc of our circle. So this is 
our terminal point right here. So when we are asked in which quadrant our terminal point lies, with this example, we can say that it lies in quadrant 1. Because this is actually 1, 2, 3, and 4. Since in measuring angles, positive angles, I mean, we are doing the counterclockwise um, movement. So this is actually self explanatory, but still, I am going to clarify this to you guys so that you will not be um, you will not be confused. So this is quadrant one. So from the initial point, we go from here to here. This is an arrow. And this is quadrant 2. From here, we go here. And from quadrant 2, we go from here to here. And from here, we go here to here. So that is actually how we name the four quadrants. Because in order to go to quadrant 2, we are to pass here first, like this. In order to go to quadrant 3, we need to pass it here first. In order to go to quadrant 4, we need to pass here first, and then so on. So in order, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because our way of direction is right like this. So you get me? Okay, so I hope I made that clear. Let me just erase this. Okay, so we are now to solve for the first one. Again, we have already drawn our Cartesian plane right here. And again, we have 510 degrees and its coterminal angle, least positive coterminal angle, 150 degrees. So as you can see, where does 510 degrees and 150 degrees lie. So since this is 0 degrees, this one is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees. So in here, we are going to base on the smallest positive coterminal angle. Since we all know that 150 is greater than 90 and less than 180 then we know that 150 lies at so we know that 150 will lie in this area in quadrant in quadrant two. okay so now we are to draw the angle but even though we already know uh, which quadrant 150 degrees lie I mean 510 lies I mean both we still need to plot it here so this is actually a rough representation of the graph mm -hmm. actually I put it to 30 because we all know that 180 minus 150 is 30 so but again, I'm not sure if this is, but again, I'm saying, I'm not, but again, I'm not saying that this is actually the most accurate representation of this angle. It would help better if you have a protractor, but I'm just saying this to you as a disclaimer that this is a rough representation of our um, angle, but still, we have the proof 
here that it really lies in quadrant 2 as 150 is greater than 90 and less than 180 so it should really lie in quadrant 2 so yeah here we go This should be our initial site right here on the positive x-axis and this is our terminal terminal so we're going to do this to show you the representation of the terminal point on circle so I'm sorry if I will not be able to make you perfect circle this again this is just a rough representation okay so our terminal point actually lies here Again, we are sure that it lies in quadrant quadrant two. So this is our final answer right here. Oh again, actually um, 510 degrees is this one completing a one revolution yeah and this is actually our 510 degrees so 510 degrees in black and we'll do 150 degrees in blue So that is actually how um, coterminal angles work. Coterminal angles are actually angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side with another angle. Like for instance, we have our original angle which is 510 in black right here. And its coterminal angle is actually 150 which is in blue right here actually they have the same initial side and the same terminal side the only thing that is different is that 510 here already complete completed a whole revolution as seen right here and 150 just lies here so that is actually how coterminal angles work. So basically in this diagram, in this problem, coterminal, the coterminal angle 150 degrees made it easier for us to plot five to plot 510 degrees in the Cartesian plane. So basically that's it. Going back to the questions going back to the questions we were able to locate and state the quadrant in which the terminal point is that is in quadrant two and the angle in degrees is five hundred 
measure 10 degrees. And the smallest positive co-terminal angle is 150. So I hope you have understood how these concepts work together. So it actually makes the work more easier than the usual. So I hope that you learned this approach in this video. Okay, so this ends our problem set number three. So I guess that is all for this video. I hope that you learned a lot and thank you for watching my video. Have a good time and happy learning!